Hello everyone and welcome back. In our last video, we went over the sensory innervation of the airway and why it matters. These nerves and the regions that they supply are exactly what we have to target when we prepare someone for fiber optic intubation. The idea is simple. If we can block or numb those areas properly, we can prevent reflexes like gagging, coughing or even laryngospasm while still letting the patient breathe on their own. So in this session, we'll go through how we can numb or block the airway. Broadly, there are two methods that can be used. The first one is non-invasive, where we apply local anesthetics to the mucosa of the airway. This is called topicalization. The other one is the regional or nerve block techniques where local anesthetics is injected close to the nerves. We'll look at them separately, but remember they often complement each other and can be used together. And since topical anesthesia is the most common method, we'll discuss it in this video. The most widely used local anesthetics is lidocaine. It comes in various forms and it's sometimes combined with vasoconstrictors such as adrenaline or phenylephrine to reduce the risk of nosebleeds especially when the nasal route is preferred. The 4% solution and the 10% spray are the most commonly used preparations. Systemic absorption from topical application to the upper airway is lower than expected, so in practice, higher dose can be used. However, the maximum dose of lidocaine should not exceed 9 mg per kg lean body weight. That is why it is important to know about the strength of the drug that we are using and also the delivery devices that we are using. Cocaine is another local anesthetic that is used for topicalization. It is the only local anesthetic that causes vasoconstriction so it makes it very useful in nasal topicalization. The problem with cocaine though is that it can strain the heart and raises blood pressure so it should be avoided in patients with heart diseases or hypertension. There is also a mixture called Moffitt solution made with cocaine, adrenaline, bicarb and normocyline. This mixture is very useful because it gives anesthesia, reduces swelling and also shrinks blood vessels. Now, topicalization is not just about numbing the airway. We also need vasoconstrictors, especially when using nasal root, because the nasal mucosa is highly vascular. Bleeding can therefore occur during instrumentation, blocking the view through the fiboscope. On top of that, vasoconstrictors also reduces swelling and help maintain the patency of nasal passage. In this case, cocaine is particularly useful since it has natural vasoconstrictor properties. Other vasoconstrictors like xylometazoline and phenylephrine are often combined with lidocaine to provide both anesthesia and vasoconstriction. There are many techniques and devices that can be used to deliver the drugs that we have discussed. This includes mucosal atomization device, the McKinsey technique, nebulization, and spray-as-you-go technique. Local anesthetics can also be directly sprayed from its container or used as mouthwash or goggles. We'll discuss the ones that are mostly used in clinical practice. A mucosal atomizer device converts a local anesthetic such as lidocaine into a fine mist or particles. This ensures that the anesthetic spreads over a large surface area, effectively reducing the dose while increasing the coverage. For deeper structures, a mucosal atomizer device with a longer malleable catheter known as laryngotracheal mucosal atomizer device can be used to deliver anesthetics. Just like mucosal atomizer device, McKinsey technique also creates mists or sprays of local anesthetics. It involves connecting a 20-gauge cannula to oxygen tubing via a three-way stopcock. And through the remaining port of the stopcock, a syringe containing local anesthetic is connected. When the anesthetic is injected, the oxygen flow through it creates a jet-like spray effectively dispersing the anesthetic. 
We can also use nebulizer to deliver local anesthetics into the airway. About 5 ml of 4% lidocaine nebulization for 10 to 15 minutes does a very good job. It is also well tolerated and topicalizes the entire airway including the trachea. This method is especially useful for patients with the restricted mouth opening since other devices like atomizer can't easily be used. For deeper structures like focal cord and trachea, we can make use of fiberscope's working channel. This method is called spray as you go technique. Through the working channel, a small amount of lidocaine can be delivered directly onto the vocal cord through a small tubing like epidural catheter. As the scope advances, local anesthetics can be deposited into the trachea. In practice, these methods are often combined. For example, we might use mucosal atomizers to topicalize the nasal mucosa, a spray for oropharynx and the spray as you go technique for larynx and trachea. The exact choice is dependent on local availability of drugs and devices as well as clinical experience of using such devices. I'll discuss what I've practiced during my residency and also provide alternatives that can be used. For nasal topicalization, we used co-phenylcaine spray in our institute. That's lidocaine 5% or 50 mg per ml with phenylephrine 0.5% or 5 mg per ml. Each squat is about 0.1 ml so one spray delivers around 5 mg of lidocaine and about 0.5 mg or 500 micrograms of phenylephrine. Usually 3 to 5 sprays go into each nostril. Alternatively, about 0.5 ml can also be given through mucosal atomizer device. Other options include 4% cocaine soaked cotton soaps or Moffitt solution, nebulization of about 5 ml of 4% lidocaine, or Moffitt solution that is given through mucosal atomizer device. For topicalizing oropharynx, you used 10% lidocaine spray. Each actuation delivers about 10 mg of lidocaine or roughly 0.1 ml. One spray is applied to the base of the tongue, then one spray goes into each tonsillar pillar. In total, this usually requires around 4 to 6 sprays. Doing this numbs the tongue, soft palate, oropharynx, where the gag reflex is the strongest. A mucosal atomizer with 5 ml of 4% lidocaine can also be used for topicalizing the oropharynx. As an alternative, the McKenzie technique with same volume of lidocaine can be used too. Another option is gargling viscous 2% lidocaine for 1 to 2 minutes. For anesthetizing larynx, the spray as you go technique is commonly used. Here, a 2% lidocaine is delivered through an epidural catheter inserted via the working channel of the fiberscope. Small amounts of lidocaine are instilled directly onto the vocal cord and trachea as the scope passes through. Typically, 2 ml is applied just above the vocal cord, followed by 2 ml below them. Alternatively, more invasive techniques like transtracheal block or superior laryngeal nerve block can be used, which we will be discussing in our next video. That's all for this video. See you next time.